In this video, I'm going to talk through how you can generate brand new, completely from scratch leads for your marketing funnel business. I'm gonna show you where to find leads, where to find new prospects that you can start getting in contact with, where to generate new leads and a lead list, as well as researching where your current leads and where your potential leads hang out. If you've got no leads on the horizon, no lead generation process or attraction process, this process on the board behind me is gonna outline everything you need to generate new leads from scratch that I've learned completely from beginners all the way to my process that I still use today. If you're a funnel builder, go ahead and click subscribe because I produce new videos like this every single Tuesday, helping funnel builders like you sell marketing funnels. Maybe your problem is that you've got no idea where to find leads from scratch. If you're completely starting from fresh, Fresh, or you feel you've exhausted all your other options, or maybe you're going down a different path like with a new niche, you wanna understand where and how to find new leads. A lot of funnel builders make the mistake of thinking that there aren't new leads out there, that there are completely like everyone's been sold to already, there's no new businesses out there and that's just not true. Some of my favorite customers to work with are customers who have been with another company for a long time because they're often looking to shake things up and using this process on the board behind me, you can generate 20 to 30 brand new leads within the space of a week that you can start having a regular conversation with. Next week, I'm actually gonna do this in real time so make sure to tune in for that. In fact, if you hit the bell notification icon, you'll actually be notified when I produce new videos so make sure you hit the subscribe and the bell icon and I'm actually going to go through this process on the board behind me in real time and we're going to see if we can find some brand new leads using the exact system that I've got on the board behind me. I have got another lead generation process as well if you've got zero niche zero ads, no portfolio, and you're looking for a really simple three-step plan to generating new leads from scratch, go ahead and visit go.sellyourservice.co.uk forward slash leads and actually give you my three-step plan that I use to generate hundreds or even thousands of leads completely on automation with no ads, no niche, no portfolio or anything like that. But in the meantime, let's talk about how you can generate new leads for your funnel business from scratch. I've got four columns here that Maybe you can write down on a piece of paper or take a screenshot or something and fill this in. And actually, there's a fifth box here I'm gonna put down here like this. And what we're gonna do is go through this. And these are the five stages of generating leads from scratch. So the first thing is to understand what are your requirements for a lead? It's really important to understand that if you wanna go generating leads, what do you need? And a really easy place to start is a name. So obviously, like, who are you getting in contact? What's their actual name? It's not enough to say, I wanna work with Samsung or I wanna work with Echelon 3 or something. You have to understand the actual individual that you are gonna to wanna to talk to. If for the time being, you've only got a business name, that's a good indicator that you need to dig a little bit deeper and understand about the name of the person you wanna go after. So we need their name. We also need their contact information. Now, typically, that's going to be an email address. You could uh, get their phone number as well, like a lot of relationships you know, start with a phone number. It's a really easy way to generate a lead as well, especially if you wanna get through to like them and actually have a direct conversation with them. I don't consider like LinkedIn connections much of a, a contact information because it's a social platform and if they don't check LinkedIn or if they disappear, then they're not gonna be much use to you. Whereas an email address is a lot more personal and people check their emails and they're also easier to write to and they're much more private and personal. So I'm always Always going to want to get an email address over anything else. So these are the bare minimum. The next two things that you're going to need are needs. What are their actual needs? What are they looking to focus on or work on or fix or change or improve within their business? What do they want from a relationship with a supplier like yourself? You might not get that straight away, but at some point you're going to need that. And next up you have authority. So this is basically, are they the decision maker? Do they have the purse strings? Do they have the ability to make the decision. There's nothing worse than making a pitch to a customer and them saying, oh, I need to go take this to my manager. You need to make sure that the person you're getting in contact with is actually the person who you're able to give the invoice to because 
If it's anyone lesser than that, you're basically doubling the amount of work and effort. And everyone says, oh, I'll take it to my manager. You go, great, that's really good. I like the fact that you're Robin, but typically I only deal with Batman. Uh, so I'm gonna need to talk to your manager. And there's a lot of ways around that. I don't have time to go into it in this video, but you need to understand at least who is the decision maker in the business. The next thing I like to do is create a hit list. Some people call this a wish list. This is gonna be a list of 20 to 30 businesses or people, and ideally you wanna try and get at least this information. You might not have their contact information to start with, but you can get at least their name. And you wanna work on a hit list of 20 to 30 businesses that you would love to work with. These basically represent your ideal client or your target client. It might be that you do end up working with these clients. I've got hit list, I've got clients here, big corporate clients that I wanna work for and work with, but it might be that these are clients who either represent the exact type of business that you wanna work with, or they represent the people who you literally want to work with. If you don't have a hit list of 20 to 30 ideal clients, it's almost impossible to start generating new leads because you're not working from anything. It's kind of the equivalent of saying, I'm really hungry and I really want to go to dinner. And then when someone says, okay, what type of food do you like? You go, I'm not telling you that. You have to know what you're working with before I'm able to get you more of it. So have a hit list. And if you don't have a hit list, you think, oh, there's no businesses out there that fit my profile. That just means you haven't done enough research. This here, this can take anywhere to two to three weeks. But next week, if you tune in, I'm gonna show you how I generate, I don't know, maybe five or six different businesses that I could potentially work with within the space of something like nine minutes. Do your research, spend a lot of time going into this. And what we're gonna do is do this one and this one bit backwards and forwards because this column and a little bit around this column is gonna help you build out this hit list. If you feel you've exhausted this, we then move over to this one. Community is the most undervalued part of lead generation, I think. This is because a lot of people think that lead generation is about being really good at pitching, and it's not. It's actually being really good at stalking. Good salespeople are professional stalkers, not professional talkers. And what this means is you need to start looking at things like the forums, that your customers are a part of. You might say, how the hell do I know that? Do some fucking research, right? Spend more time being more annoying and start asking people. Let's say that you have the name of your customer and you know that they are the CEO and owner. And you think there's no way that they just hang out on a CEO and ownership forum. First of all, you don't know that. Secondly, forums like for gyms, golf, sport, movies, there's tons of different ones, will often have a CEO corner or a business corner uh, or a self-business corner or something along those lines. A lot of people who have one particular interest, birds of a feather flock together. And no, there might not be a SaaS business forum, although I'll guarantee you there is, and we can probably spend enough time digging around and trying to find one. But if you're looking at forums, and these are the old school chat room style places that people still use, millions or billions of people still use them. Everything from video games to movies to sport and fitness have got these forums and even specific topic forums around that community. The next thing is looking at things like groups. So this is your classic like Facebook groups. This is LinkedIn groups. Uh, I haven't used the new one. Was it Clubhouse? I haven't used it yet, but maybe there's things like on there. So you need to find out the different groups that they're part of. Join them. Don't spam them, but join them and start. This allows you to then do the research, right? And this informs this one back here. So there's things on social groups, there's channels. So a bit like this channel, these guys will be looking at YouTube content. They might not be looking at the exact YouTube content that you think they are. The CEO of a vegan food company might not be looking at vegan food channels, although maybe they are, but maybe they're looking at C CEO channels, financial management channels. Maybe they're looking at video content on running better businesses. Maybe they're looking at their different influences. Another one, events. This is so underutilized. The amount of events that are happening, even now during a global pandemic, still online is astronomical. And yet, no one seems to use them. Events have sponsors, right? Sponsors have forums, groups, channels, and all the other things I'm about to talk about. Speakers, when they get on stage to talk about a specific thing, they're either your ideal customer, on the hit list, or there's someone who has some kind of influencer channel. Maybe they've got a book. 
And this is all beginning to inform the area of where your current customers or your potential leads hang out within their community. Finally, if you want, so here's my absolute killer secret that no one seems to use. And I'm gonna do this next week. We'll do this in real time next. Speak to the event organizer. Email the event organizer and say, hey, I didn't manage to make the event this year or last year or whatever. Make up some excuse, whatever. Could you please send me the speaker list or the topics list? of what the event was last year. First of all, you never know, they might be looking for speakers, right? And you might have w wormed your way in there. But secondly, that's basically a list of all the things that people are willing to pay to access to learn more about. That is a list of problems. So that then feeds into the need section. You've also got podcasts. There are fucking billions of these things at the moment that your audience are potentially listening to. And if you go, oh, I don't know, it's because you haven't researched enough. Time it. Time the amount of time you spend researching it. And if you walk away after doing all of this, if you spend two solid days, just two days building a hit list, two days building your community, two days doing research, and two days thinking about your requirements, that's less than a calendar week. Well, that's no, about a calendar, sorry. That's just over a calendar week. I'll guarantee you, you'll come away with a list of 20 to 30 businesses that you could start targeting. You'll also come away with a list of areas where future potential customers who you've never even heard of are already hanging out. Research, this is the part where you have to get really deep into it. This is where you start looking at interests, topics, pages, all of this plus more. What I like to do is go on audiencer.io and I like to search using their tool for interests. Now what Audiencer does is take all the Facebook interests, they've got something like a database of 200 or 300,000 interests. I've got another video for it, which I'll link up in the corner, talking about how to use their tool. It's a one-off fee, it's no subscription or anything like that. I think there's even a free trial available where you can basically get a list of thousands of different interests that Facebook has tagged your niche as being interested in. And I wanna create a list of around 30 to 50 different interests that I think my audience might be interested in because that's gonna come into play later when we start doing advertising and paid outreach. So with all of this, you're gonna have a better understanding of who your potential leads are. And this is the most important part, right? This part here is the thing that hardly anyone does. And this is, to tell people. Imagine that, where we actually live in a world where we can communicate and market to each other. When you say to people, I want more leads, I'm looking for more leads for my business, and they go, great, who are you looking for? You go, just small businesses, I don't really know. Bullshit. You now have four different areas. You're looking for people who are interested in these things. Do you know anyone? You're looking for people in these podcasts and these events and these channels. I'm looking for people who look and sound a lot like these businesses. And then I'm looking to work with Bob Brown from CEO Tech Industries. Do you know him? Do you know anyone who might know him? The number one reason people struggle with lead generation is because they themselves don't know the types of leads they wanna go after. So what I need you to do is understand the types of leads that you wanna go after and start fucking telling other people. As I mentioned, I have actually got a kind of an addition to this, which is a three-step plan on generating leads on autopilot. So whereas this is very outreach heavy, very fast results, you know, and, and basically relies on hard work, I've got another method that you need to do in parallel. If you've got no need, if you've got no advertising budget, no portfolio, what you can do is use this three-step method. It's completely free. Download it, go.sellyourservice.co.uk forward slash leads, or you can use the link down below and I actually share my three-step program for generating leads from scratch, hundreds or even thousands of them. If you are a funnel builder, go ahead and click subscribe. If this video was useful, I'd love to know which part of the process here you're looking to work on. Or better yet, leave a like and tell me in the comments down below, who are you looking for? Who do you want to work with? Tell me their name. Tell me their business. Tell me the types of leads that you want. Tell me the types of forums and interests that you're interested in working alongside. I've actually got another video here talking about how to build a marketing funnel for your business or so a marketing funnel for your funnel agency. So if you're looking to increase the number of sales and leads you generate on automation, you might want to check that video out in it. 
I go over how I generated leads from my agency using a very simple funnel and what I use to close leads and sales as well. So go ahead and click that and check that video out if you're interested in learning more about how to build a marketing funnel for your own agency. In the meantime, guys, thank you very much for watching. Massively appreciate it. Make sure to hit subscribe and the bell icon and all that kind of stuff. See you on the next video. Have courage, commit and take action.